Greetings and welcome to another presentation in this series on the sanctuary. This presentation, we will be looking at the golden candlestick, the second article of furniture found in the holy place. So in the previous presentation, we looked at the table of shoebread. So as we continue our progress through the sanctuary, it will become very apparent that there was a change in the metal used in the holy place when compared to that of the outer court. Brass was the metal used for the labor and the altar of burnt offering to show God's judgment, while gold was the predominant material used in the holy place. Everything in the holy place was golden, with even the boards for the tabernacle, though made of shitty wood, were overlaid with gold. And this we find in Exodus 26, verse 15 and verse 29. And thou shalt make the boards for the tabernacle of shitty wood standing up. And thou shalt overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold for places for the bars. And thou shalt overlay the bars with gold. So gold was used to show the deity and divinity of Jesus Christ. There was only one source of light inside the holy place. And that was provided by the golden candlestick, also known as the menorah in Hebrew. Therefore, one can just imagine how beautiful the holy place must have been with the golden gleam of the lampstand. As you've seen from the previous presentations, every single item found in the tabernacle had a particular purpose. And we'll be looking at the golden candlestick and everything that had to do with the golden candlestick in this presentation. So God used the earthly sanctuary to reveal precious truths about his son and the golden candlestick was no different. So now we'll be looking at the golden candlestick in detail. And this is what God told Moses as it related to the construction of the golden lampstand. Exodus 25, reading from verse 31 onwards. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knobs, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds, with a knob and a flower in one branch and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knob and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candlestick and in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knobs and their flowers. And there shall be a knob under two branches of the same and a knob under the two branches of the same and a knob under two branches of the same according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Their knobs and their branches shall be of the same, all it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it, because the candlestick was the only light source in the holy place. And the tongues thereof, and the snuff dishes thereof, shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look, that thou make them after their pattern, which will show thee in the mount. So the golden candlestick was to be made exactly as it was shown Moses when he was on Mount Sinai, because it was a pattern of the candlestick that was found in the heavenly sanctuary. The candlestick viewers was made of a talent of pure gold beaten out of a single piece with seven lamps. This is possibly what the golden candlestick might have looked like, since this design can be seen on the Arch of Titus in Rome after the temple in Jerusalem was sacked in the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. And what you're seeing on screen is a relief that is found on the Arch of Titus in Rome. And you can see that after the temple was sacked, they made a sculpture to commemorate the victory that they had over the Jews in Jerusalem. And they took the candlestick out of the temple and all the vessels out of the temple. And this is a sculpture of them carrying away the golden candlestick from Jerusalem back to Rome. 
this design, as you're seeing here, of the menorah was adopted in 1949 as the emblem of Israel. It is also the emblem of the president of Israel as well. It depicts the golden candlestick in the midst of olive branches with Israel written in Hebrew. The golden lampstand was placed on the south side of the holy place before the table of shoebread to provide light. And this is confirmed by Exodus 40 verse 24. And he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward. This was done to ensure that it followed the pattern of the heavenly sanctuary. The table of shoebread, as I looked at in the previous presentation, was the throne of God in the holy place. And the golden candlestick stood before, notice it stood before God's throne. And this is confirmed by a vision that John had while he was on the Isle of Patmos in Revelation chapter four, seen in heaven. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And remember, we said that there was a door or an entrance to the holy place. And this is the door that John saw that was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven. Notice a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And you can get the colors of the rainbow, which is called a spectrum, when light is shined upon precious gems or precious stones. So that is why you are seeing the rainbow around the throne, because the appearance of God on the throne was like a jasper and a sardine stone, which was a precious stone. And notice what we read in Revelation 4 verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And notice this. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Remember, this is a vision of heaven. And before the throne, there were seven lamps of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. So the earthly tabernacle was a copy of the heavenly sanctuary. So this scene is clearly a picture of the holy place because it was in the holy place that the lampstand, the seven branch candlestick was placed. And John saw in the throne room of heaven and he saw the throne of God with God sitting upon the throne. And he saw before the throne, seven lamps of fire, which is a picture of the golden candlestick. And here you are seeing a picture again of the holy place. So here you have the table of shoe bread, which is the throne of God in the holy place. And before the throne are the seven lamps of fire or the golden candlestick. So Moses was instructed to make the tabernacle just as how he was shown it on the mountain. And it was a copy of what was actually in heaven. The golden lamps and viewers had a central shaft from which three branches extended from each side, forming seven candlesticks in total. The main shaft signified the one God who is the source of light and life, while the six branches represented humanity or mankind. The center shaft represented Jesus Christ as the vine, with mankind being the branches. So there's a perfect union of humanity and divinity. Six branches plus one center shaft gives us seven, the number of perfection. Jesus said in John 15, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So Jesus is the center shaft. So just as of any tree, you will see the trunk of the tree, and you'll have branches extended from the trunk of the tree. Jesus is that vine. And humanity, Christians, we are the branches. And no branch can exist from the trunk or the vine of a tree. It has to be connected. Jesus is the light, the true light. And we are the branches. He's the vine, we are the branches. So Jesus is the source of the light which Christians have. So 
the center shaft represented Jesus Christ as the true light, while the branches extended, extended off the center shaft. So the branches are connected to the center shaft or the vine. The candlestick was to be made of beaten work. Notice that. It was to be made of beaten work from one piece of pure gold. So there was a piece of pure gold and the candlestick was beaten out from that one piece. The hammering of the gold in the making of the lampstand pointed to the sufferings of Christ. And this we find in Isaiah 53 verse five, which says, but he, Jesus, was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we are healed. And here you are seeing a photo of a scene from the Passion of the Christ, where Jesus was beaten mercilessly by the Romans. And you are seeing Pontius Pilate in the center of the photo, holding up the sign which he had, which he had written in Latin, Hebrew, and Greek of Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Again, viewers, the golden candlestick was the only source of light in the holy place. The light shone upon the table of shoebread and the altar of incense, which we'll look at in the next presentation, thus enabling the priests to fellowship and intercede on behalf of the people before God. Therefore, viewers, the golden candlestick represented Jesus Christ as the light of the world. And notice what John the apostle wrote in the first chapter of his gospel. In him, was life, and he's speaking of Jesus Christ. And the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, that is John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to be a witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. And John 8, verse 12. Jesus said this, then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. John 12, 46, Jesus continues, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And Revelation 21 verse 23, when sin has been eradicated from the universe, the scriptures tell us that, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon. Not that there won't be any sun or moon, but the city, the new Jerusalem had no need of it. Why? For the glory of God did lighten it. And the lamb who is Jesus is the light thereof. So Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He's the light of the universe. Viewers, on the six branches of the golden candlestick, were to be made bowls like the shape of almonds with flowers. The use of almond shape on the lampstand is interesting because it was used by God to settle the issue that arose over the priesthood. And notice what we find in number 16, when Korah and his gang rebelled against the authority of Moses and Aaron. Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and Jehovah is among them. Wherefore then lift you up yourselves above the congregation of Jehovah? And Moses said unto Korah, Hear, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of Jehovah, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And yet brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also. Moses understood that the sons of Levi were not content. They were not satisfied with the position that they held in serving the priest, sons of Aaron. They wanted the priesthood as well. And Moses hit the nail on the head.
by saying, Seek ye the priesthood also, for which cause both you and all thy company are gathered together against Jehovah. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And notice what God was now going to do to settle the issue as to who he chose to be the priest in Israel. Aaron's rod buds. And Jehovah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take up every one of them a rod, according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod, and thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. So notice what was happening here. God instructed Moses to tell the people to choose 12 rods from the 12 tribes of Israel, all of Jacob's sons. But when it came to the tribe of Levi, instead of Levi's name being on the, the rod, Aaron's name was supposed to be on that rod because God was saying that Aaron is my choice. Verse 3 tells us this. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi, for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony, where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod, a piece, for each prince one according to their father's houses, even 12 rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before Jehovah in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloomed blossoms and yielded almonds. And that is why almonds were placed on the golden candlestick. Because God was looking forward in time. He made Aaron's rod to bud and yield almonds. And Moses brought all the rods from before Jehovah unto all the children of Israel. And they looked and took every man his rod. And Jehovah said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me that they die not. And incidentally, viewers, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram were killed. God caused the earth to open up and swallow them alive, them and their entire household. And the 250 men who aligned themselves to Korah and this gang, they took censors and lit their censors with fire. And a fire from God came and destroyed them simply because they use strange fire. Remember when we looked at the altar of burnt offering, the fire that lit the sacrifices was divine fire. It was holy fire. It was fire from God. But these men offered common fire instead of holy fire, and God destroyed them as a result. So God settled the dispute over who should be the priest in Israel. So this settled the dispute, because while all priests are Levites, not all Levites were priests. This is very important for persons to understand. All priests are from the tribe of Levi, but not all Levites were priests. Only Aaron and his sons were chosen to minister before God in the sanctuary as priests. Notice what God then says in Numbers 18, the next chapter. And Jehovah said unto Aaron, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. And thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. And thy brethren, also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of thy father, bring thou with thee, that they may be joined unto thee and minister unto thee. So the Levites were to minister unto Aaron. Aaron and his sons were to minister before God. But thou and thy sons, with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. Viewers, the significance of the rod that blossomed and yielded almonds was to demonstrate to all Israel that Aaron was chosen and ordained by God to be the high priest. It also foreshadowed and prefigured Jesus Christ as our great high priest. Additionally, this miracle of a dead rod coming to life 
and bearing almonds was emblematic of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The almond tree viewers is called the awake tree or the wakeful tree, simply because in Israel, it's the first to bloom and bear fruit after the long sleep of winter. And here you're seeing a picture of a branch of the almond tree with blossoms and an almond just about to bear. The almonds on the golden candlestick was also a symbol of the tree of life. And to the right, you are seeing an artist's rendition of the golden candlestick. And you are seeing what appears to be almond buds on the candlestick as God had instructed. And on the candlestick at the top, you are seeing seven lamps where olive oil was to be placed. So viewers, everything that God instructed Moses to do as it related to the articles in the sanctuary had a particular significance. And I'm breaking down the significance of all these items to make the point that everything related and pointed us to Jesus Christ, the son of God. On the golden candlestick were seven lamps which contained olive oil, the fuel source for the light. And notice what we are told in Leviticus 24, reading from verse one to four. And Jehovah spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually. So the lamp in the holy place was to be burning continually because it was the only light source in the holy place. Without the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron, who is the high priest, ordered from the evening unto the morning before Jehovah continually. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Aaron as a high priest shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before Jehovah continually. So in three verses, we see the word continually being emphasized. So the golden candlestick was to be lit at all times and olive oil was to be supplied. It had to be topped up every day from the, in the morning and in the evening to ensure that oil was always in the golden candlestick. And the oil had significance as we will see throughout the rest of the presentation. In the scripture, olive oil is a clear symbol of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. Many persons may not be aware of this, but Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit that empowers his church to be beacons of light in this dark world. Therefore, he is always in the midst of the golden candlesticks, just as the olive oil was always to be in the seven lamps to cause the candlesticks to burn continually. Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit, and he's the one that empowers his church. And that is why he's always in the midst of the golden candlesticks. Notice what we find as well in Revelation 1, which confirms this. John who was exiled on the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus, said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And the Lord's day here is not Sunday. It is the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, and this is what the voice said to him. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So Jesus here, and Jesus is the Son of Man was seen in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And notice how he was attired. He was dressed as the priest. He's dressed as the high priest. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. And that garment was made of linen and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his ears were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And notice this verse. 
and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Why is his feet burnt like fine brass? Because remember, Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The lambs, which, which were, were the sacrifice, were placed on the altar of burnt offering. And that was made out of brass. So that is why Jesus had feet like unto fine brass, as it were burned in a furnace. Because Jesus, after he went to the cross, which was a symbol, or the burnt altar of burnt offering was a symbol for the cross, ascended to heaven. And then he's serving now as our great high priest. So when John saw him in vision, John saw Jesus with his feet like fine brass, as it were burned in a furnace, because he was just coming from the cross. 40 days after his crucifixion, he ascended into heaven. And John was now seeing Jesus as a priest after his sacrifice on the cross. So John saw his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, which represented the word of God. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. And this confirms what I've just said. I am he that liveth and was dead, because he was crucified, buried, and then he was resurrected by the Spirit of God the Father. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And of the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And then he explains the vision to John. The mystery of the seven stars which thou saw is in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou saw is, are the seven churches. So the seven candlesticks represented the seven churches. So the candlesticks are a symbol for the church. Notice also Revelation 2 verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And you can see a picture here of what an artist have done. Jesus is here with a sword coming out of his mouth, which, which represented the word of God. Is here was white as wool. He had on white linen garments with a golden girdle about his waist. In his right hand, you are seeing the seven stars. And you are seeing him in the midst of seven golden candlesticks. And you are seeing John lying prostrate before Jesus as if he were dead. So Jesus Christ, viewers, is the high priest in the midst of his church as the Holy Spirit. And this is why he said in Matthew 18, verse 20, for where two or three are gathered together, that is the church. That's a quorum that is needed for the church to be at worship. Two or three. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Viewers, Jesus is now in heaven physically because he ascended bodily. But here he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. How can Jesus be in the midst of the church when he is physically in heaven? He is in the midst of his church by his spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, who is the word of God, and Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus tells us that he is in the midst of his church. And the only way that is possible is if Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit, because he is in the midst of the church by his spirit. So viewers, all of these have significance to Jesus Christ. The golden candlesticks also represented the church of God. We just read it earlier that the golden candlesticks that Jesus was in the midst of are the seven churches. It is representative of the church of God, the people of God. Christians are mere reflectors of the true light, Jesus Christ. Notice what Jesus said to his disciples. Ye are the light of the world. 
a city that is set on a, on a hill cannot be hidden. And people are what make up cities. So if we are lights in the various cities around the world, we cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give a light unto all that are in the house. Jesus then tells his disciples, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So Christians are reflectors of the true light, just as how the moon is a reflector of the light of the sun. So viewers, Jesus is the son of righteousness and we are children of light and we are reflectors of his light. The golden candlesticks and the olive tree were also mentioned in the book of Zechariah. Zechariah 4 tells us about the golden lampstand and the olive trees. Notice what Zechariah saw. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep and said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold, a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and the seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side of the bowl. Remember, I showed you a picture earlier of the emblem of Israel. You are the menorah and to the right and to the left, you had olive branches. So what Zechariah saw was used by the state of Israel to be its national emblem. A menorah with olive branches on the right and the left, just as Zechariah saw in vision. So I answered and spoke to the angel that talked with me saying, what are these my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of Jehovah unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith Jehovah of hosts. So the golden candlestick and the olive trees, especially the olive tree, was a symbol of God's spirit, God's Holy Spirit. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Then said he, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. So the olive oil was a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And this we, we can see from scripture. David who was a type of Christ was anointed by Samuel to be king of Israel after Saul was rejected by God. And in the picture you are seeing Samuel with a horn of oil anointing the shepherd boy, David. First Samuel 16 gives us this account. And Jehovah said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And then verse 10 says that Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Jehovah had not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, They remain yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And then David was anointed. First Samuel 16 verse 12 and 13 tells us this. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at. And Jehovah said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, which is a symbol for the power of the Holy Spirit, and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And notice what transpired after David was anointed. To indicate that the oil, the olive oil, was a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Jehovah came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. The olive oil was also used for anointing the tabernacle and its contents, as well as the high priest. Notice what we find in Leviticus chapter 8, which speaks about the consecration of Aaron and his sons before they could actually serve as priests before God. And Moses took the anointing oil, which was olive oil, and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified them. So the Holy Spirit 
is also used to sanctify things and individuals. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar and his vessels, that's the altar of burnt offering, both the labor and his foot to sanctify them. And notice what transpired. And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. So Aaron the high priest was anointed with olive oil, indicating that Aaron was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And you're seeing a picture here of Moses laying his hand upon his brother Aaron, and Aaron is dressed as the high priest. He had on the breastplate of righteousness with the 12 precious stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And in the background, you're seeing the labor, and in the foreground, you're seeing the, seeing the altar of burnt offering with the Levites standing to the side and behind Moses. So Aaron, the high priest, was anointed with oil. So just as Aaron was anointed with the Holy Spirit, before he could minister as our high priest, the same was true of Jesus Christ. Notice what we read in Hebrews 1, verse 8 to 9. And this is God speaking to his son, Jesus Christ. But unto the son, he, God, said, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. So the father calls the son God. Because the father is divine, so his son must also be divine. So God said to his son, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, who is the Father, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And that is clear throughout scripture. And here are some verses to prove that fact. So Jesus was also anointed with the Holy Spirit. Luke 3, verse 21 and 22 speaks of Jesus' baptism. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, The word, my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. And after his baptism, Jesus then went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Luke 4 verse 16 says, And he came to Nazareth where he was brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And he read from Isaiah 6 to 1, verse 1, which is quoted in Luke 4, verse 18. Jesus said, The Spirit of Jehovah is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And after he read this particular passage, he said, Today, is this fulfilled in your hearing? Peter then says this in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus Christ also promised to baptize his disciples with the Holy Spirit and with fire, which was fulfilled at Pentecost. And this we find in Acts 1, verse 4 and 5. And being assembled, with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye, my disciples, shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So Jesus was speaking to them 40 days after his resurrection. And then not many days hence is 10 days later, which makes it 50 days after his resurrection, which is the day of Pentecost. Hence, it is called Pente. Pente means 50. Pentecost happens 50 days after Jesus' crucifixion. So on the day of Pentecost, notice what happened. Acts 2 tells us this. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So the disciples were unified. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. Jesus promised them, he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And you are seeing the picture of the, the disciples in the upper room with the Holy Spirit resting upon them like as cloven tongues of fire. Because the olive oil that represented the Holy Spirit was what caused the lamps to burn. We are lamps, individual lamps that were to let our light shine. So when the Holy Spirit was poured upon the disciples, 
they were empowered, they were on fire for the Lord. And this is how they were able to spread the gospel throughout the then known world so that we Gentile Christians can hear the message. So you are seeing the pouring out of the Holy Spirit and it took the form of cloven tongues of fire upon the disciples. The fire viewers was a result of Jesus being anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit to serve as high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. So after Jesus' resurrection, he ascended to heaven and he too, like Aaron, had to be anointed with oil. He had to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. And notice what we read in Revelation 5 verse 6. John is again in vision. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, because Jesus had the physical marks of his crucifixion. His hands were pierced. His side was pierced. So that is why John saw him as a lamb as it had been slain, because it is 50 days now after his resurrection. And the lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, are the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And after he was anointed to serve as high priest, the Holy Spirit was sent forth into all the world. And that is what happened on the day of Pentecost. So John was in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. He is now seeing the other side of Pentecost in heaven. He was seeing what took place in heaven. Jesus was anointed and the oil of the Holy Spirit was poured upon him and it came down to earth. And this is what David wrote about in Psalm 133, verse 1. This is talking about the day of Pentecost. Notice what David wrote. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This takes us back to Acts 2, verse 1, where the disciples were together in one accord. It is like the precious ointment upon the head. Jesus has been anointed that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. Aaron here is a type of Jesus because Aaron was a high priest, typified Jesus Christ, our high priest. So when Jesus was anointed, the oil of the Holy Spirit went down upon the beard and went down to the skirts of his garments and it came all the way down in Jerusalem upon the disciples. And notice what verse three says. It came down as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, that is in Jerusalem, for there Jehovah commanded the blessing which was the promise of the Father, even life forevermore. So viewers, the golden candlesticks is also significant in the lives of Christians because it represents witnessing and evangelism through the power of the Holy Spirit. The lampstand illuminates the table of shewbread so that we are able to share the gospel in the light of God's words. So viewers, this presentation was to show in a detailed way the significance of the golden lampstand. It represented Jesus Christ. That center shaft represented Jesus Christ as the true light of the world. The three branches on the right and the three branches on the left represented Christians who are abiding in Christ as a light. And as Jesus is the true light, we are mere reflectors of his light, which is why he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. So the golden candlestick represented Jesus as the light of the world. We who are children of light are also to let our light so shine. The olive oil that fueled the golden candlestick is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It is also Jesus Christ in the midst of his churches as we read in Revelation chapter one. It is Jesus Christ as the high priest who is tending to his church, just as Aaron had to do. He had to ensure that the oil was always in the seven lamps so that the golden candlestick could have light. Jesus Christ is in the lives of Christians. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that is why we can be empowered to share the gospel with the world. So the golden candlestick has many significance in the lives of Christians. So as we looked at in the previous presentation, 
you have the table of showbread, which presented the word of God. You have the golden candlestick, which represented the church and the Holy Spirit. So as we study the word of God, we're empowered by the light of the Holy Spirit. And it is in this power that we are able to evangelize and witness to the world and share the good news of salvation with them as I'm doing right now. So the golden candlestick represented Jesus Christ as the light of the world and also Christians who are the branches of that candlestick. We ought to abide in Christ so that we can have life everlasting. Jesus is the light of men. He's the light of life. And the only way we can have light and life is if we abide in Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And may God continue to empower us with his Holy Spirit so that we can be reflectors of the true light, Jesus Christ. Have yourselves a wonderful day.